guys, welcome back. Always on part two of this conversation with uh, Liz Lenjo. We really want to try and figure out, uh, always on is always about that intersection of church and media. We really want to try and figure out how do we help churches in this season, especially in this conversation, especially with issues of copyright, making sure your channel is not pulled down because you put on stuff there that you, you know, you, doesn't belong to you. In part one of this conversation, we talked a little bit about some of the basics of, of, of copyright. I have a couple of questions, uh, Liz. Actually, the more we talk, the more, more questions I have. Eh? Yeah. So, we talked a little bit about this thing for uh, churches live streaming. So, church, a church will go on the live stream their worship. Yes. Uh, so, they'll do a couple of songs, some original, some maybe by different uh, copyright owners. Um, what I heard you say is there's a difference between when you live stream and then when you finish your live stream and upload it. Yes. Just tell us what that is. So when you're live streaming, you're basically doing a broadcast, right? Okay. So then it's in real time, people are singing and all that, which is sort of fine, right? Uh, because it's, it's transient. It's just, you know, moving on, right? Mm. But the minute you make a copy, you put it online, you've made a copy, uh, which now then interferes with the issues of copyright. My right as an author to make copies and make money from it, mm. right? Mm. So the minute you leave it now online, either you put it on your YouTube channel or on your Facebook channel or whatever, because now it remains there, you yeah. basically uh, reproduced, reproduced it. it. Yeah. yeah. You made a copy and then you've also done what we call making available. Because as the author, I can decide whether I want to make it available or not, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And then again, now the availability, people are watching it. So then if I had a platform where I had put my content, then you interfered with, you know, how I monetize it, mm. for example, mm. right? So because of that, then it becomes an issue. Yeah. So where you've not cleared any rights, you're better off doing a live stream and then take it down. Don't put it up. Oh, wow. Yeah. So if you put it up, then you have to remove any song that you know you did not clear so, so the rights to. That's so interesting. What you're saying is that if I do uh, any music that doesn't belong to me as a live stream, the bar is a little bit lower. Yes. Once I finish my live stream and upload it, what now I am doing is I've made a copy of it, I've made yes. it available for people, and I have not consulted whoever in a sense owns the, the <laughs> whoever owns the copyright yes. to the song. So so I could be at risk. Yes. What am I at risk of? And this is where we talked a, a little bit earlier off camera about this thing for a claim, a strike. Just tell me a bit about those. What what are those? So, because you have the copyright, you automatically have the rights to decide how it's used. So with digital platforms, what you get to do is to assert a claim. So as the author, I, I, I put a claim and say my content has been put on your platform without my authorization. So, so it's the thing we about in, in part one, for there's a content ID. Yes. I've uploaded mine, so there's a content ID match. Yes. Now, and the author, the, the owner of the copyright puts a claim. Yes. To say, so that one is by the copyright owner. Yes. That belongs, that belongs, that to, belongs me. to me. That belongs to me. Yes. And then now what happens is now the platform will be able to now issue a strike and say your content has been flagged for what now we call copyright infringement. Mm. You have used the song without the author's uh -huh. consent. Uh -huh. yes. so, so the claim is when the owner of the copyright says, hey, hey chill, that belongs to me. Exactly. And they let the platform know. Yes. A strike is when the platform says, hey, uh, warning. Warning. Now, yes. before we even talk about a strike, what do I do if I get a claim? If I see a copyright claim on my, say, YouTube account, what are the, what am I supposed to do? So the the channel, of course, first of all, the, the YouTube is likely to just first blur out your content so that then you figure out on the or back end it. or mute it okay. so that you figure out on the back end how you resolve the issues with the author right okay. so the author could either say one oh i did not put that um channeling of monetization backwards uh so that then you can still use my content but all the money comes to me okay. or we can have that conversation i did a remix of your song uh, can we have a conversation about revenue share okay but this when you do it after the fact, you will not, it will not be as easy as before the fact, mm -hmm. right? Because before the fact, you'll even be able to say, I brought it a new flavor, I'll attract Kenyan audience. So maybe I get 60% for 
from this now what we call derivative works i've created yes, yes. something new from what you had already mm. created right so but after the fact it means then because i feel aggrieved as the author i may just say you oh, know the what cards in your yeah the cards yeah, are in yeah, my yeah. favor so yeah, i'll be yeah. able to say you know what i'll take 70 percent despite you you know having taken care of all the yes, yes. recording calls you having 10 that. million followers Doesn't having matter. 10, exactly <laughs> <laughs> so okay so so um so when you get a claim when you, you see a copyright claim what that is is for you to try and figure out what do i do yes. there's a couple of things uh, so if you're, it, you you think could be muted so it could be speaking with a copyright owner yes. finding them which is a pretty tedious process finding the copyright owner and saying okay would you give me permission to use this yes but the other thing to do may actually be the safer thing to do may actually be to cut out yes the sections um where you've used this song. where you've used that what you're saying is if I, and this is interesting again for churches, I'm doing a worship set. The songs do not belong to me. Yes. In the live space, when I'm, you know, in church on Sunday, uh, again, the bar is lower. There's really no way for the copyright owner to know that I'm doing it. But now I have made a copy of it and made it available <laughs> in the digital yes. space. What may make more sense for you as a church would be to actually take your stream and just chop out the music. Yes. And chop out the worship. Yes. And put up the stuff that you know belongs to, to you. you. Exactly. Lest the owner of the copyright say, listen, this is a claim. I have a claim on this. And with the claim, then you figure out, do I contact them? I think it's a tedious process. I'm like, yeah. if I've done Travis Green's song, how do I know how to reach him? I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I and, and I think, <laughs> yeah, when with these times, I think it's now time for also churches to be innovative and even artists as well. Like yeah. I talked about the Creative Commons license, then I'm constantly churning out content that I give out for free that in turn my brand benefits because I know people in Kenya are singing my songs, yeah, yeah. people in South Africa are singing my songs. It's a win-win for everyone. So then I, I can create content that is just for Creative Commons and then I have a back door. I don't know if I can use a back door here. <laughs> what, if, what if I said, let me use African songs? Mm -hmm. What if, what, let me, what, let me, what if I use songs that are less likely to attract a copyright claim? You see, at the end of the day, it's property someone created. Mm. So there's someone somewhere who owns it. Mm. The question is whether... You just close my back door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the question is either yeah. now, uh, is the, where is the author? Can yeah. I find them? If it's music, I think, you know, maybe now in public domain because maybe the author died 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you have to find the owner first mm. because it didn't just come from anywhere. So, so, so that's the that's a claim. Let's talk about a strike. A strike now is when there is a claim by the copyright owner. I have not resolved the claim, and maybe the owner of copyright says, "Take that thing down." Yes. So that's a strike. Yes, that's a strike. Um, on on YouTube, because I think that's that's where people are most concerned. Eh? How many strikes do I get? Around three. Three. Yes. Um, so what happens is strike one, uh, they're saying, warning, um, you've used copyright uh, material that you have not cleared, be aware, so perhaps they will just take down that particular content mm. or ask you to remedy that yeah. you know, and use those mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. Second claim, I get that you say that, you know, you've used again content and maybe they'll now say, you know what, now you risk getting your, con your channel completely yeah. deleted, for example. Mm. So by strike three, because now already the platform has um a score sheet where they say you're a repeat offender yeah. and the more you you're a repeat offender it's also a risk to their business right mm. because now they're enabling yes, copyright yes. infringement oh, absolutely. so they'll of course remove you because now you're a liability to their business yeah right so then you have to be very careful <laughs> guys please listen to what what she's saying you have to especially with your youtube you have to be completely on top of it with the content that's being created in this season yes and that you have to keep your eyes open for content claims I don't know what to do with those claims, but more importantly, keep your eyes open for content strikes. Because once you get three strikes, your channel is gone. Kaput. Poof, it's gone. <laughs> and there's no dispute resolution, there's no mechanism, you lose your content. If you have a thousand videos, if you have two videos, everything, everything is, is gone. gone. Yeah. That's very scary, by the way. So, But let me ask you, I see this thing about disclaimers all the time. People are always putting disclaimers. They say, so this content does not belong to me, it belongs to Liz, she sang this song and she, you know. Uh, tell me about disclaimers, do disclaimers hold water, are they legally 
you know, enforceable in any way. What what's a disclaimer? When I put a disclaimer on my <laughs> on my caption. So I, I I would say a disclaimer is a lazy way of dealing with rights, mm. right? It's either I'm trying to absolve myself because I feel like this burden is too much. Yeah. So it's like saying I am. I know I'm stealing, but I don't mean to steal. Yeah, yeah. Please let me steal. It doesn't make sense, right? And yeah. that's what we've been. We, our people have been doing mm. online. They're saying, "Oh, I don't own the music," mm. you know. So, what does that mean, yeah. right? So they they really don't hold much water. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same thing, you know. You go to a parking lot, you pay for the parking, and then you're told, "But whatever happens to your car is your responsibility." Yeah. Then why did I pay? Mm. You know. So disclaimers are neither here nor there. They can be challenged. It's just that we. As humans, we probably are like, no, I don't want too much drama. I'm not going to fight it <laughs> for the sake of peace. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I paid 300 bob parking. But but once on. <laughs> once uh, once a copyright owner lays claim to it, your disclaimer, in other words, means, means nothing. Absolutely means nothing. nothing. Because the law provides that I own copyright. Yeah, I decide yeah. how to use my work. Yeah, yeah. You're using it without my permission. Yeah, yeah. You're infringing. Mm. Period. Mm. It's an offense. Yeah. So your disclaimer means nothing. That's 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 so interesting because me, I, me, I've always thought as long as I put a disclaimer, I'm covered <laughs> somehow. No. And you see, at the same time, you're also ben- somehow me. you're benefiting from this use. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. It's a, if you're a DJ, people get to know more about you. But then again, so what happens to me as mm. the artist, as a content creator? Mm. You, you're probably busy getting gigs, but what happens yeah, to yeah. me? So ideally, I should have maybe taken so, out a so license. <clears throat> let's see. Let's summarize this conversation and see. First, there's the uh, content ID. Which just means I put up my content, I put an ID, it's a unique identifier for yes. my content. If anybody else puts up uh, content and there's a content match, a claim can be made. But if there's a Creative Commons license, it allows me then to use that music. Yes. But you never know what has, you know, where that license applies and where it doesn't apply. Yeah, but they, it, the, with Creative Commons, there's always stipulations and they use oh, the sign. So, so you can use it however you want. Yeah, so, but as. With Creative Commons, as long as you're not monetizing, you should be fine. Aha. Yeah. So, so if I am monetizing, then then the the content owner can say, okay, hang on, yeah. I put a click link to this and say, then is the revenue coming to me, or are we? Oh yes. So, if, for instance, I have a channel that has maybe a million followers and I want to do a rendition of someone's song, it might be worth me reaching out to them beforehand exactly. and saying to them, I'm going to do. Even if it's a copy of the song. Yes. Even if I change the language. Yes. It's a derivative work. It's derived from the original. From, from the original. Yeah. So it's best if I speak to the copyright owner and I say, okay, I'm about to do this. I'm going to either direct all the revenue towards you, the person will be comfortable, or I say, can we share the revenue? Yes, exactly. We Especially negotiate. for derivative works, you should be able to negotiate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and share that. Uh, but then the, the content owner might also, might also, when they upload their thing, say, I don't want anyone to use it anywhere. Yes. And then if that happens, the, the content platform st- gives you a strike. Yes. And on YouTube in particular, you get one strike, you get two strikes, you get three strikes. You're out. Kaput. kaput. <laughs> everything, everything, in a sense, is gone. Yeah. And then we talked about disclaimers. <laughs> they really mean nothing. Mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I hope, I hope this is useful for you. Our hope with this conversation is for content creators. Um, I think the, the, the hope is that content creators will know how to manage their content, what to do with it, so that you, you know your content isn't taken down. You put so much energy into, exactly. into this thing. I want to ask you uh, one last question. Eh? We've talked about disclaimers, all of that. So what if someone says, listen, I went and bought maybe an audio track or I bought some video, or I bought uh, even a picture from, you know, a stock photos or something like that to use, and I put it, you know, on my content. Maybe it's a bed. Yeah. Right. Maybe it's a bed for for a talk I gave and I bought. Is it mine? Can, is it, can I now lay claim to it because I bought it? No. <laughs> Chances are you might not, especially if uh, from these platforms like stock. Uh, images or yes, yes. stock videos or whatever yeah. they come with certain uh, conditions or a license sort of agreement yeah. chances are it's not exclusive right mm. so if it's not exclusive anyone else can use it so mm. what you've bought the right to is the right to use yeah yeah that's it that's so but you cannot start saying oh um, so and so has now used yeah, this yeah. video or these pictures that are used <laughs> nothing you see the risk of using what has been generated for a mass market yeah. is that another brand is likely to use so mm. if you're willing to take that risk then mm. fine but if not, then you create your own from scratch, yeah. Um, so, so me, I'm giving a talk. I've gone, I've bought a, a bed, a track that I want to put as my bed for my talk or for my video, and then I hear it on someone else's 
<laughs> someone <laughs> else's video. <laughs> the idea here is to look at the licensing agreement when I bought it. Yes. What does the license allow me to, to do, do with it? Exactly. Uh, if I want to use it exclusively, then I pay a premium. Of course. And then, and then it's mine. Yes, I that, that's a big one for for people and you in see, the content you pay, space. When you want it exclusively, you're basically telling the author, "I want you to relinquish your rights." All your yeah, rights. You, so you, no one else can use yeah, it. Yeah, no one else can use it. Yeah, so yeah. it's a big ask, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like telling someone to to sell their shamba to you, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to sell my shamba you know, for twenty. That's cents. so interesting. So if you haven't read your licensing agreement, you could actually buy a piece of music, use it, and get a copyright claim. Good. Yes. Because you've used it, it outside the agreement. The scope of yes. what you bought it for. Exactly. That's so interesting. And I was seeing that what a platform like YouTube, for instance, suggests is that you actually go to, I think they call it YouTube library. Yes. Their YouTube audio library to get music from, from there. Them. Then there you can you can use that music on YouTube without any without any challenges. Yeah, exactly. That's because also for them it's a very quick business model, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because then they don't have the you know, content there, always being flagged there, down and all that. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, and you know advertisers can now you know say you know YouTube. Absolutely, safe. yeah, yeah. Oh man, such a good conversation. Thank you so much for having it. We've <laughs> talked about um uh you know uh, churches creating content in this season, putting up a lot of content one of the key things that I've taken out from this conversation, by the way, is this thing for, if you do a live stream, the bar is lower. Once you upload your live stream, yeah. <laughs> the bar is much <laughs> higher. And you can actually get a content claim from the owner of the copyright or a strike from the platform. Three strikes on a platform like YouTube, you're out. and you're gone. Guys, be very, very cautious. I think it's important. The goal of this conversation to help you know uh, just how to manage your content, how to position your content in the online space, so that you don't lose it. The worst thing would be that you spend all these months creating content and then you lose your channel. It will be an absolute tragedy. Hey guys, always on part two of this conversation coming to an end. We still want to have a conversation about tech and what tech is available for guys. But until then, bye. <laughs> <laughs>